Welcome to episode three of Life of Charlie, and I've called it that because uh, Charlie has been my nickname since 2005, when I first started playing for Doncaster, actually. Uh, played for Doncaster in 2005, my first professional club, albeit semi-professional, and because my surname is Cocaine, uh, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe this, the, the street name for the drug Cocaine is Charlie. So... I got called Charlie since 2005, so the podcast is pretty much about the life of Charlie. So today I'm going to, I am going to specifically talk a little bit about my life. It's not always going to be just about me. I'm going to be bringing different kinds of content along the way. Um, not necessarily interviews with people, but speaking to interesting people who are doing interesting things and um, just trying to get other people's perspective on life and what's going on and, and all that kind of stuff. Just a bit of interest, really. Uh, I know since I've started getting into watching podcasts, I like to look and listen to things that are that are quite interesting. And um, I'm actually going through a period in my life right now which is pretty interesting. It's um, uh, definitely a transitional period. So since 2006, I've been a full-time professional sportsman up until the end of 2017, so I did uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 12 years, 12 years as a full-time professional rugby league player, I'm only 34 years old, so that's more than a third of my life as a full-time professional athlete, so you could say I've been in a routine, I've been in a fair routine for 12 years, and I'm in a period now where I'm transitioning from um, the full-time environment I'm playing semi-pro, so I'm in I'm in a part-time environment, and, and a couple of the big differences for that is the amount of time that you train and the time that you train. So um, we now train on. I'm playing now semi-pro for York City Knights, a very ambitious club in League One, which is like the third tier of professional clubs in the UK, and. Um, we train three nights a week, so we train Tuesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. Whereas before, I may have trained on a Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday morning, played on a weekend. Um, and sometimes in the full-time environment, your training would go from, say, 8 a.m. in the morning, and I would probably get on for around anywhere between 12 midday and 3 o'clock mid-afternoon. Mid that, that would be the kind of time frames that I would be coming home and there's no, you know what you're going to do when you're in the full-time environment, you know that you're going to go to training, you're going to have breakfast, you're going to do weights, uh, you're going to do a field session, a gym session, you might have a bit of video preview or review from the opposition uh, from the, the, the week before or the week coming up. Uh, so you're in a little bit of a routine, but it changes all the time, it's pretty flexible. So moving into the, the real world, I call it, because it is the real world, you know, working life, um, because I think it's fair to say that as a professional sportsman, you can't really call it a job. You can't really call it a job. And if if any professional sportsman tells you they're off to work, they're doing the job and all the rest of it, they maybe don't really appreciate it as, as, as much as what they should. Uh, and I didn't start I didn't start my full time professional career until I was twenty two, uh, two thousand six. So I would be twenty two going on twenty three. So I was relatively a late starter in terms of the professional full-time environment compared to some of the guys that started as a 16-year-old kid out of school and straight into the academy and, and full-time from there on. So uh, it's not a job. It's a privilege. It's a big privilege that, pr that, that pays pretty well. It's not like a footballer's wage or anything like that. It's a good above-average wage for doing something that you absolutely love, so getting paid to do your hobby, so yes, but I suppose in, in, in the correct term, it is a job you're getting paid for your, uh, for exchanging your time and efforts for a cause, so some may call it a job, but I like to see it more as a privilege, and um, just getting paid for a hobby, so I'm coming out of that environment now, and I'm coming into a, a, an environment where it's part time, so I'm training on a Wednesday, uh, sorry, I'm training on a Tuesday, Thursday and Friday evenings, and play on a Sunday, so the difference, couple of main differences, the, the, the big one is probably the time, obviously, so instead of training during the day, I'm now training on an evening, and I'm getting home at like 10 o'clock on a night, which is very different to what I've been used to for the previous 12 years. 
but I, I still see it as I, I, I'm in a position, I'm in a fortunate position still because I'm still getting paid for doing my hobby. The only thing is the times have changed when I, when I do my training. Um, and all the games will be played on a Sunday this year rather than sometimes on a Friday or Saturday or even a Thursday in uh, in some instances in the full-time environment. So that's the big one is the time. Now the other one, what I thought I may find difficult was the transfer from uh, the full-time environment and facilities to the part-time facilities and what I expected. And I suppose what I expected... Uh, probably a little bit ignorant of me really because I expected uh, the facilities to be uh, a lot lesser quality a lot lower standard uh, and I expected the training to be the same lower standard uh, less quality but what I've actually found is and I'm not just saying this because I play for York now but what I found is number one the facilities are superb the facilities at York St. John, where, uh, York St. John University, the, the gymnasium is like a state-of-the-art gymnasium, a very good gymnasium, and the, the, the outdoor pitch, what we train on, is like a 3G pitch. So it's an all-weather pitch, and it's a very high-quality pitch, so you never have to worry about a, a muddy, boggy um, puddles on a field or anything like that. We don't have to worry about that, which is something that I'm, I thought I may have had to contest with, and I, and I haven't. So I think that's definitely helped me in terms of the transition from being a full-time professional, going to the part-time ranks. The thing to get used to the most for me is definitely the time, training on an evening. And the the other thing that's made it easier in terms of the transition is the fact that the facilities are top-notch. So that has helped massively. The facilities are top-notch and the coaching methods that the coaching staff use are very um, modern, shall we say. They're very up-to-date and we've got a young coaching staff, so they're very forward thinking, uh, not the old school, what you may associate with as, as you move down the division. So I'm in a fortunate position, really. The other thing that I've done as well is I've changed from not working to now working two days a week. So I now work two days a week where uh, I'm working for Hull KR, my former club, the club that I actually love and will probably be affiliated with for the, the rest of my life. I'm working for my club now two days a week and I've obviously had to make a bit of a transition and get used to one or two things. And the first one is nine while five. Nine while five. So that is like, you know, I used to be, you know, I'd get to training at eight o'clock and have breakfast, we'd do video at that, and then we'd finish for like between 12 and three o'clock. Now it is nine while five. I am now exchanging my time, and it's not flexible. I am now exchanging my time for money in the nine to five. So that is taking some getting used to. Now, before I start a professional sport, I was in the military and I worked with my dad for uh, probably a year or two years before I, before I actually made it full time. So I've been used to regular kind of work. But again, when I worked with my dad as a, as a builder, uh, I would say it was somewhat flexible. It, was, it wasn't set nine while five. It might have been like half eight while four or you know a little bit flexible or till the work's done or whatever. In the military was obviously way more disciplined. You had to be there on parade on a morning just to get you like school really, like the register just to make sure you're there. Nine o'clock on parade and you would finish work at whatever time it was. Four, five o'clock, whatever it was, I can't remember. Me, uh, my military days were a bit of a blur if, I, if I'm totally honest. Um, so yeah, so the transition is uh, it's interesting. And I, I always, I see myself as being in a fortunate position because, and, and, and I'm in a fortunate enough, I'm in a fortunate position now because of the mistakes I made when I was in my mid to late 20s. Because if I, if I didn't make mistakes when I was that age and if I didn't get myself in uh, a few bits of trouble, I wouldn't have become the person I've become today. So what I mean by that is, when I uh, when I left Hull KR initially in 2011, that's that's when my life really changed. And you may have heard me saying this before, but that's when I started really educating myself, reading books. I've got a couple of books I'm going to recommend for you here tonight: The Compound Effect and Think and Grow Rich, which is a, a book that I'm reading again. So I'm, I'm through it. The, the marker pen's there because I like to. I like to highlight points that jump out at me. Um, but 2011, 2012, that's when I really, really started educating myself. And that 
has really set me up now for the end of my career because it's got my mindset and my mind frame in, in a good place. So a lot of things that I see in, in rugby league in particular is boys coming to the end of the career and they're just like, shit, what am I going to do? What am I going to do now? Because they haven't throughout the career thought about beyond the career. And I, w- I would have been in that same position. I would have definitely been in that same position if it wasn't for my ups and downs because the, the, the bad times that I went through forced me into becoming a different person. It forced me to, to start personally developing as a person and becoming somebody, evolving, evolving as a person. And if I didn't, if I didn't go through all that shit and, and get through that period of change and get that kick up my ass where I really, really had to take a look at myself, to be brutally honest, I wouldn't be in the position I am today where I found the transition from full-time to part-time. I found it okay. Yes, there's been some great factors. The facilities are great. The coaching staff are superb. Um, and things like that. So, that'll be clear. That's just coming. Harvey, stop. Come here. Come here. Come here, then. Come here, then. She's your mama. Why is she coming back? So, if I didn't go through uh, that kind of stuff, it wouldn't have set me up right for where I am today in terms of um, being able to just get on with stuff. So, I've come to the stage in my career where... Oi! Stop! I've got to the stage in my career where um, it's time for normal life. And if there's one advice I could, one bit of advice I could give to anybody going through the sporting career, if any of the boys watch this, they probably won't, to be honest, but do something away from rugby. Do something away from rugby to prepare yourself when you come. Gizmo, when you come to the end of your career, because, like I said, I see boys now that have come to the end of the career. They've got no idea what they're going to do. They're at a loose end. They're stuck. And they're just like panic. Because they don't know what they're going to do. This has helped me massively. This kind of stuff. The uh, the self-education. The reading. The audios. And all the rest of it. Has helped me in my transition. Massively. Uh, coming out of the full-time environment. So. It's been. Uh, it's been somewhat easy for me. And. It's been. Uh, it's been. At times it's been like, well, but I'll give you, give you it from this point of view. 2017, I thought I was going to retire at the end of 2017. So coming into that year, it were on my mind a lot. Even though I knew I'd set myself up okay, I'd got myself prepared and all the rest of it, I was still a little bit nervous because don't forget I spent over a third of my life doing this in a full-time environment and got to where I am today. Um, and thank God I went through all that shit because it set me up for where I am right now. So, uh, just a short one for you today, really. I wanted to come at you because I've not done nothing for a, I've not done nothing for a little while. Um, I was going to do a podcast with uh, a guy this week, but we've just kept missing each other. And my vlog man, the guy that takes care of the vlogs, he's away on holiday, so I'll not be back with a vlog until next week because I am not technically gifted enough to put a vlog together. Although I should study it really. It saved me, uh, saved me putting it on other people. So. That's where it's at for me. Um, transition, big transition. Uh, and, and the reason that I wanted to uh, talk about this today was because, uh, like I said, the podcast is called Life of Charlie, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about me. And also the fact that this kind of stuff has really helped me. This stuff has really helped me move forward um, and prepare myself for, for where I am now in terms of beyond full-time sport so uh so that's it that's all i've got to talk about folks short and sharp um and uh, i'll probably come at you again next week with another podcast i'm going to meet a guy actually from rugby league tv a guy that's trying to really promote the game from amateur through to championship so just outside the super league um and that'll be a really interesting one that i'll be putting out in the next week or so we will be back to you with a vlog again soon so thanks for tuning in thanks for watching uh, remember if you do enjoy or you like listening to what I've got to say feel free to share this information with a friend send them the link let them take a look and uh, see if we can grow it organically that way thanks for your time folks and uh, see you again in the near future <laughs>